been in my basement, I certainly have had nightmares. I think that people sometimes have an attachment or a fascination with things that they find frightening. My name's Brian, I'm from Portland, and um, I'm a bartender. And I'm Sarah, and I'm a school psychologist. And also, we take creepy toys from people who don't want them, and we rehome them with families who really like creepy stuff. Unsettling Toys is a small, independent business that uh, rehomes kind of creepy or odd-looking dolls. We've been at this for two years. Should you want to look at the unsettling toys that we have up for adoption, you can hit the unsettlingly available tab and kind of browse. We custom match people with their toys. Um, you can't just click a button and buy it on the internet here. People might be more hesitant to send us their really special items because there wouldn't be, you know, anyone could just click and buy it. We had a client once who adopted a doll and became um, uncomfortable around it and actually burned it. We try to always be very mindful so that they're matched up appropriately with a family. Loretta is one that we've had someone who identifies as a psychic tell us that she's with spirit and actually told us her name. We try to respect everyone's different beliefs. There's a lot of people where things being with spirit or things being possessed or possibly haunted are really closely tied in with their personal beliefs and their spirituality. And there's also the people who just really like sort of the nostalgia and the history. He had the idea one day on his birthday, I just basically did the website, the Instagram and business cards. I thought it'd be fun for us to have something like that to do together. It was a, a fun project. We had no idea where it was gonna go. But then almost immediately it took off we started getting phone calls and emails and packages. I think we were massively unaware of the size of the community that was gonna be interested in these. So you were thinking of adding to your fabulous collection and I have a couple that made me think of you. His former owner thought that he heard breathing at night coming from Ernie. Now this one. Ooh, she's pretty, oh, she's cool. I yeah. like her. I think I like her the best. She totally yeah, she fit with the girls in the bedroom. I want to get Shadow. Seriously, I, I like her. All right. All right. Well, that's perfect. We can send her to you. Thank you, Michelle. We'll be in touch. I'll send Shadow over. Shipping varies wildly and is very expensive. Within the United States, we sometimes can ship like a small non-fragile toy for 10 bucks, but we've had it be over 100, depending on how big of a toy we're shipping to what country. There is an adoption fee. We have to charge an adoption fee because we often send people money when they're going to send us a toy, then we'll send them money for shipping, but we generally try to keep the adoption fees as low as we can. Our adoption fees are generally between 35 and $100. There's a couple exceptions in either direction, um, and that includes shipping. We include shipping within the United States on that. It's been growing so fast lately that the extra income that we get from unsettling toys is just going right back into the business. I'm gonna need scissors for when I do the... I I know where scissors are. Thank you. We don't have to make any of this up. They actually <laughs> do help me pack everything. Go, go ahead. The packaging, it's its very labor intensive. Like we, we do like a little card and stickers and magnets and buttons and, and like a thank you note and wrap it all up in brown paper and do a wax seal on the top of it so that when it arrives, it comes with a little bit of of presents, you know. We, we send a certificate with every doll that's adopted. It's our certificate of adoption and placement. We put their name on it, and, and just so that they have a little thing that shows that they adopted from us. When we like ones, it usually gets rehomed, but some of the ones in the permanent collection are really cool, though. This is Maria. And it's definitely one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. The person who sent her to us went and picked her up, but then was driving home from buying her and was in a car accident. That was the first of the weird things to happen when he took Maria home. This is Grace. It's your average creepy doll. One day in May of 2020, so the toy, she didn't show a lot of interest in it. She played with it once or twice. And the family actually cleansed their house in a ceremony with holy water. The nightmares have largely gone away. This is a box that we got from a client who didn't want these things in their house. And if it's a clown, then I leave the room immediately. Yeah, Brian does not like clowns. Oh, Aww, there's some good babies. Oh, she said that this one's from when she was a kid and that she liked this one a lot, but that her kid, her, her 
own child actually yelled when she saw it. <laughs> this is the one. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> I think we have some clients that'll really like this one, don't you? Look at his face. Yeah. We're about to do a psychic reading. Hey, hey guys. guys. With one of our clients and um, one of the psychics that's we, that we've met through the business. What I want to do is pick up on the energies that the dolls are emitting, the Im emotional imprints that have been left on the dolls. I have four dolls already. Was there any specific energy that you feel your dolls currently have that you're trying to blend them with? It seems like I'm getting like a male spirit and a female spirit and a little girl spirit. So okay. kind of something that would blend into maybe a family atmosphere that Don't likes hurt. cats. We need to get some of these spirits to start paying rent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This one came um, from a house where they were feeling uncomfortable. They would sometimes, you know, feel like someone was in the room with them. It's the girl with the bonnet. She's about the same size as your other one. I'm definitely sensing a frustration or like an element of betrayal in some capacity. This one, the uh, they had a dog that would look at it and was would whine. From that close up, I get I get like kind of a frenetic, frantic energy. Like I get the feeling this doll has probably moved around quite a bit. That is leading to a sense of like a lack of stability. Okay, and then the last one we grabbed looks like she may have been snuggly at one point. But there was there was something amiss though. The doll is is unnerving to look at. Part of me also wants to rescue it because I don't want it going to somebody who's going to try to say there's a demon in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah we, we understand that. Yeah, we do. We get that 100%. <laughs> this one, um, Sarah thought of immediately. Yeah, that was the first one when I, I, I looked at, I peeked at your website and I was like, ooh, I like that one. Do either of you have any any feelings or intuitions or preferences about a name for her? I'm I'm getting Raquel. Raquel. Oh. Oh. That's a perfect. Work. Yeah. I think she'll I think she'll go really nice with your other ones. I think I do too. It's perfect. I really awesome. At Angelo's on 46 and Hawthorne, we're going to have a, a pop up where we'll have all this on display. People will be able to adopt any of these little guys. It's gonna be a good time. Oh my gosh. She's 150 years old, we think. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Look at those eyes. I know, she's really striking. And here is Emma. <laughs> she's very sweet. Oh, I'm so glad she's found a good home. I can't wait to email the person that sent her to us. She'll be she'll be really happy. She's only been with us about a week. This one knows a good thing when she sees it. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a fun day. It was a success, I think, in many ways. At first, I thought, well, this is just kind of you know, for us. Once we started placing some of these little terrors, people are happy. I'm floored by how many people enjoy the idea. You know, even if they're not involved quite yet, I think it's just perfectly odd. It is a lot of effort, but um, it's really worth it to us for the community, for the opportunities to um, do something both that makes people happy and that is gloriously spooky. I hope that at some point we can open a small shop and do a lot more community outreach. It would be super fun to open a storefront and it would be really fun to just sort of grow the amount that we're removing and the number that we're adopting out. But I think at the same time, it is very apparent two years into this that we have absolutely no idea where this is going from here. <laughs> <laughs> like at any point during the last two years, if we'd tried to guess, we would get it completely wrong. Like it, it has a life of its own and it's taken off. While we are on the ride, we are not necessarily steering the ride. We are not steering the ride. Everything's got a story, people and dolls, and everything's got some damage, people and dolls, and that's what that's what makes everyone unique. Uh, we're only here in real bodies once, and I think if if you find something that you enjoy doing, I think you you just have to give it a shot. <laughs>